The Houston Texans are making history with the best start in franchise history, uh, at least tied for it. I think the last time they started a season 5-1 and one was 20. 20- 12. So the Texans were good that year. Everybody was excited about them that year, and we knew that. But I think this team is even more exciting, and the Texans did exactly what they should do. It's not easy, especially for teams. And again, we keep saying young teams. There's plenty of experience on this team. I think it just feels like a young football team because they're so new to the winning thing. They started winning last year. Now they've started hot this year. And all of a sudden it's like, well, is this a a, a good, complete team? The answer is yes. And I'm going to give you just a couple reasons in this video as a quick recap. We're going to talk about what my takeaways from the game were. I'm going to talk about why this should have been a trap game. And I'm going to talk about why going 5-1 and one and the way in which they won the game was so important and how in many ways I'm even more impressed with this win than I am again in the win uh, against Buffalo. So first, let's start. I always love just looking at the box score. Let's see what happens. First off, Drake May is much better than Jacoby Brissett. You were playing a much better offense than it would have been if Jacoby Brissett was in the game. It's not a good offense that you're playing against, but a much better offense offense. And what I love about this game is that CJ Stroud and the offense started hot. The defense forced turnovers and they won how great teams win football games. They got up because they were just flat out better. All right. You took a lesser opponent. You got up quickly. You had a better quarterback. You have the more potent offense. You probably have as good or better defense. And you stepped on their throat early, and then in the second half, you ground them into submission. And what I mean by that is Joe Mixon, 13 carries, 102 yards. By the way, his first seven carries were for 15 yards. So that means the next six carries were for 87 In case anyone was wondering, with that long of 59, and let's not forget the longer touchdown run as well. Damian Pierce being back. This could is starting to look like it could be a solid one-two punch. Eight carries, 76 yards, a long of 54, which was a touchdown. Questionably, but it was a touchdown. I don't care. Now, here's what I love. No best receiver on the team, Nico Collins. No problem. Stephon Diggs, again, continues to prove you can't guard me with one corner. There's no corner in the NFL that can consistently guard Diggs because he runs routes like a professional. Here's what I love about Diggs and Dell combined. Diggs and Dell were 13 catches on a combined 16 targets. I love that. They both had a touchdown. They both ran intermediate routes, short routes, and everywhere in between routes. That was fun to watch and to just watch them be able to spread it. They didn't have to throw much, all right? Stroud only threw the ball 31 times, but 13 of those 20 completions went to these two men, and he was remarkably efficient going to them. Continued not super efficient going to Schultz, which is kind of a unique thing that I'm trying to figure out. But anyways, two forced fumbles. All right, Drake May, Austin Hooper, um, both had a fumble for uh, for um, the Patriots. That was good to see this defense do. And then two interceptions as well. So I don't like the fact that we turned the ball over, but a a time, um, I'm sorry, yeah, twice, all right, both Stroud. But what I do love is the fact that we're actually seeing this team starting to force turnovers. Two picks, two forced fumbles. That is not something you can be upset about. So I said I would talk about the game. My major takeaways were efficiency, which is nuts. But here's why this game, I think is even better than um, we're really giving it credit for. It is sandwiched in between two very difficult games. You had at home against the Buffalo Bills, and things kind of got weird in the second half against that game. And then next week, you're traveling to Green Bay. So you're sitting here, and, and, and you're at New England, and you say, okay, this has all the makings, not necessarily of a trap game, but of a trap game. Because you're in between great opponents... And you're going up against a team that should be energized. They should be revitalized because they got their rookie quarterback coming in who everybody in that organization knows is the best quarterback that they have there. 
but they just weren't playing him. So everything in this game set up like, all right, Patriots, they might get off to a slow start. Maybe, or, I'm sorry, um, against the Patriots, you know, maybe the Texans get off to a slow start. They let the Patriots hang around a little bit too long. And then before you know it, uh-oh, you look up and you have a close game in the fourth quarter. And when that happens, who knows, anything could happen. All right, now you've set yourself up in good position. You're five and one. You go to the Packers, who, by the way, looked phenomenal. Um, and I don't know if they looked phenomenal. I mean, their offense looks phenomenal. And the Cardinals really like to fumble the football, apparently. That's what that game looked like. And so you go to Green Bay. Then you got some home cooking against the Colts. You go to New York against the Jets and the Lions and the Cowboys. This is a five-game stretch. You're already 5-1. and one, But this is a five-game stretch that tests how good of a football team is this. Is this a Super Bowl-caliber team right now? Or is this just a good football team? Going to Green Bay is difficult. They're four and two. It's always difficult against the Colts, even though it's a home game against the Colts. I think you win that one uh, by quite a bit. You've already won in Indy. I, I think you take out the Colts, no problem. Then you go to travel against a very good defense in New York. Then the Lions. Hey, you see me. We never talk anything. We always say we're Lions fans on this channel that love talking ball, love talking about teams that the national media ignores. That's why we never cover the Cowboys, right? And so you get the Lions coming into town. That's a night game. Prime time. All right. And then you go to Dallas. That's a fun five-game stretch where you get to see what you're made of. And then to end the season, you got a couple of tough games a couple of gimme games, and a couple of in-between games. So, yeah, I was worried. I wasn't really ever worried that you'd lose this game, but there was some thoughts of how is this young team going to respond, and they're showing like, no, 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 no. We're here. We understand what it looks like to win week in and week out. To look at what your schedule was in the beginning, you you think you thought 5-1 and one was absolutely a possibility. You just thought the loss would, if it came anywhere, it would come against the Bills. But... It didn't, and that's what's so cool. I think the other thing that's so nice about this game is this is probably the most efficient we've seen this offense look. Look, the Patriots' defense is not what it was a year ago, but it's not a crap defense. It's a bad run defense, all right? But it's not a bad, horrible defense. So to see this offense work efficiently like they did was uh, a lot of fun to see how the passing game, you basically were just doing whatever you needed to do uh, going into that. Uh, that was fun to watch. So, yes, um, there you go, making history and uh, fun to watch. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. See you.